Have you ever been out on a plain field surrounded by nothing but a clear sky? When suddenly, what's that bright unblinking dot gliding across the horizon? You wonder to yourself, is it a bird, a plane, Superman? No, what you just saw is the International Space Station, the ISS, in low Earth orbit. For the last two decades, the ISS has almost been like a hotel in space, housing 241 astronauts from 19 countries, each staying for an average of six months. And while NASA's website lists 15 ways this space station benefits Earth, which we will come to in just a minute, there is a serious rethink whether the billions of dollars spent every year, NASA alone spends 3 billion just to maintain it, is worth the cost. With six astronauts living on it at any given time, shuttling of three fresh astronauts and supplies every three months is an expensive proposition. Because what looks like a little toy on screen is almost as big as a cricket stadium and weighs as much as 327 cars. But this giant of a spacecraft still travels at an astounding speed of 27,580 km per hour. 73 times faster than a F1 car, whose top speed is around 400 kmph. Going through 16 sunrises and sunsets in a single 24-hour period that the crew can watch from a specially designed 360-degree bay window while they live and work in 10 pressurized modules, among which are bunker-type sleeping quarters, two bathrooms, a gym and lab areas. 16 countries, 5 space agencies, 10 years and $100 billion. That's what it took to make the International Space Station a reality. In a superhuman effort to leap beyond Earth and live in outer space. And understand and master the challenge of microgravity, the one thing that prevents humans from achieving this goal. Since the force of gravity is different on different planets with space having none at all, if we are to colonize our solar system, it is vitally important that we understand how it works and how we can use it to our advantage. Therefore, almost all the over 3,000 experiments conducted on the International Space Station focused on microgravity and the long-term effects of it on the human body. The most suitable candidates for study are sometimes astronauts themselves, like Scott Kelly, who lived on ISS for 520 days, a little over 17 months, growing 2 inches taller because the lesser pressure in microgravity allowed his vertebrae to expand, but came back to his original height within two days when he returned to Earth. Sending astronauts to and fro from the Earth to Mars takes an average time of about 7 months each way. And once they are there, they'll surely stay for a while, prolonging their exposure to microgravity. While someone like Elon Musk doesn't even want a return ticket. I would like to die on Mars, just not on impact. Microgravity affects not just humans, but other things as well. Fire burns differently. Without the pull of gravity, flames are more round. Crystals grow better. Without gravity, their shapes are more perfect. Cells grow larger and in a more uniform pattern, making them easier to study. Small differences in the growth of protein crystals, for example, allow a better understanding of diseases like Parkinson's. Autobioluminescence, the natural ability of certain plants and animals to create light without a source of electricity, is enhanced in microgravity, enabling research on immunotherapy, the ability of the body's immune system to help fight till now incurable diseases like cancer. Christina Koch, a record holder for the longest space flight by a woman at 328 days, started a biofabrication facility on the ISS to explore the possibility of using 3D biological printers to create human organs in microgravity. While others study the aging process. Everything we know is influenced by gravity, but when you remove that element, whether from a mouse, a lettuce plant, a fluid or a flame, you have unlocked a whole new variable. The more we learn from living on ISS, the more we are in a way preparing ourselves for inhabiting space. While the International Space Station now stands as a symbol of international diplomacy and the collaborative effort of mankind, this wasn't always the case. Just like radars, computers and penicillin, the idea of the International Space Station came during the time of war, the Cold War. Right from the time Russia sent a dog named Laika and then cosmonaut Yuri Gargurin to space in 1961, inspiring NASA to come from behind in the space race and land Apollo 11 on the moon, a fierce competition has raged between the Americans and the Soviets for space supremacy. But in 1975, the bitter rivals made an announcement that shook the world. We will pool our resources together to create a single space station. 
To show that neither country was a winner or loser in the space race, they planned simultaneous launches. The Soviets launching the Soyuz from Kazakhstan, the Americans the Apollo CSM-111 from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Docking 220 kilometers above the Earth, but not before a major operational hiccup. Leading to the momentous handshake between American astronauts and the Russian cosmonauts in this first ever international space mission, the Apollo Soyuz mission. Early stations were designed like airplanes that were constructed and launched in one piece, containing all their supplies and experimental equipment. But this meant that they had to carry extra water and oxygen, drastically increasing the energy needed to lift off against Earth's gravity. To solve these twin problems, they developed technologies to extract moisture from perspiration-laden warm air of exercising astronauts, sweat evaporating from wet clothes and also their urine from which they now recycle and recover 94% of the water from within the ISS ecosystem. A variant of the technology developed for the space station is being used in areas with limited access to clean water and in drought-stricken regions, making a life-saving difference, one of the big gains touted on NASA's website. To solve the problem of carrying extra oxygen tanks, Scientists use electrolysis, passing a current through some of this recycled water, splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen molecules. While they pump the resultant oxygen through the craft for the astronauts to breed with, the leftover hydrogen molecules were combined with carbon dioxide using the Sabatier reaction process to form even more water with methane as a byproduct. With water and oxygen available, the next step was to build the astronauts a home piece by piece, assembling it in space like the Russians had already done with Mir. Accordingly, the first segments for the ISS were launched at the end of 1998 with the Russian proton rocket Zarya Sunrise, followed by America's Utility Space Shuttle a few weeks later. Two years down the line on November 2, 2000, astronaut Bill Shepard and cosmonauts Yuri Gidzenko and Sergei Krikalev became the first crew to reside on board the station, staying several months. In all, 42 assembly flights over 10 years, 37 on US space shuttles and 5 on Russian Proton Soyuz rockets added more modules. In 2011, NASA delivered its final consignment to the ISS, a $2 billion astrophysics experiment called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer to study dark matter and shut its shuttle program after several budget cuts. From then on, NASA astronauts began flying to space aboard Russian Soyuz capsules in what is estimated to cost them $82 million a pop. Both agencies are now a shadow of their former selves, with NASA being able to manage just four major launches in an entire decade. The Juno spacecraft to Jupiter in 2011 that will crash land into the giant planet this July. The Curiosity rover in 2012 that explored the surface of Mars for 15 years before becoming inoperational after a giant dust storm in 2019. The Maven spacecraft in 2013 to ascertain climate evolution on the Red Planet, a probe that will continue till at least 2030. And the Parker Solar Probe to the Sun in 2018 that will last till 2025. However, ISS has also provided spin-off benefits like the design of surgical instrument IJAR that can perform highly dexterous and precise movements during biopsies. That was inspired by Canada's space agency's heavy lifting and maneuverable robotic arms on the space station. The additional information on weather formations, flood, fires, deforestation and natural disasters it supplies is useful. But the same can be gleaned by the hundreds of satellites already up there and at a fraction of the cost. In a desperate attempt to keep ISS alive, NASA will allow tourists to visit the space station at $35,000 a pop per night to recover some operating costs and permit companies like Houston-based Axiom Space to use the space station as a jumping-off point to build its own station in low Earth orbit. As a cost comparison, the Curiosity rover cost just $2.9 billion to design, launch and maintain for 15 years, in contrast to the space station's annual cost of $3 billion. By scrapping the ISS, however, NASA would free up money to fund other missions in outer space, including a lunar mission scheduled for 2024. A region in outer space where countries like China, India and Israel are in a space race of their own with China taking the lead in 2019 by landing the Chang'e 4 on the dark side of the moon, after the failure of both the Chandrayaan-2 and Bereshit the same year. Whether ISS survives or not, it has surely left an important legacy for the next generation of explorers who grow up believing that it is perfectly natural for humans to live in space and that this should be the norm going forward. 
Bizbo's Limerick. Will there be a last train to the International Space Station that will pull the plug on the work of many a nation? Is microgravity worth the cost? Can the Rubicon be crossed? And has it laid the basis for a space foundation? Subscribe to Bizbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bizbo releases a new video. Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.